I've wanted for a long time to make a video about songwriting, but I've run into several problems, not the least of which is, who the hell am I to teach you anything about songwriting? If I pick up a guitar, there's some hope inside me that I don't appear to be a complete novice, but songwriting is a little bit more difficult to like measure somebody's aptitude. I have written a lot of songs, I've released a fair number of songs, but you don't really have evidence of the former and you may not even necessarily like the latter. And in any case, neither of them suggest me to be a good teacher of the concepts that go into writing songs. But I'm tired of this like credibility slash imposter syndrome problem preventing me from making stuff about what I love the most, which is songwriting. So, this is the first in what I hope will be a series of videos about songwriting, and to help me get through the credibility problem, I'm not even going to tell you things that I think about songwriting. Instead, I'm going to tell you my five favorite books about songwriting, books that I think could help anybody who's interested in songwriting learn something and improve their craft. But Jordan, you might be saying, it's 2022. Why are you talking about books? Why aren't you talking about YouTube videos or online courses? And the reason is because... Anybody can make those. A guy like me can make those, as you can see. Whereas it would be a lot harder for me to like, prepare a book of materials, assemble it, find a publisher for it, get them to like it, get them to put money in it and to put it in bookstores. These are books that I found in places like Barnes and Noble. It's not easy for me to get ideas into Barnes and Noble. You have to like know your shit or be reasonably famous or both in order to make that happen. Kind of a credibility threshold that you have to meet in order to get published. And that seems as good a reason as any to me to trust what you read in books more than what you trust somewhere on the internet. The first book I want to recommend is my all-time favorite book about songwriting. It's this one, How to Write Songs on Guitar by uh, Ricky Rooksby. I guess that's how you say this person's name. Um, I did buy this at a Barnes & Noble when I was a teenager. I bought it because I played guitar and wrote some songs but wanted to write better songs and uh, thought this would be an interesting guide. I knew the moment that I opened it up that it was different at least than the books I had bought about learning guitar and um, so I just kind of took a chance with it. Now this book includes a lot of suggestions about lyrical content, your approach to lyrics, about choosing chords, about making melodies, but the thing to me that was the most useful is a series of chapters in which the author basically like breaks down the chord choices and basic structure of a bunch of popular songs. Here's a great example, and I, I don't know if I can show this to you on YouTube without a copyright problem, but I'm going to. So um, as you can see, hopefully right here, You've got like lists of chord changes and then a bunch of detail about songs that use those chord changes. So the first example is using a one, two, four, five progression. And it's got like, this looks like 10 or more examples of songs that use that. And this goes on like for pages. He's got them in different groups. This gave me a ton of ideas about how I could construct the harmony in my songs and also taught me a lot about what my favorite writers had done in constructing their songs. This little bit alone is like the single most important tool I've ever had for learning about how to write in the pop rock genre and I highly recommend anybody who can find this get their hands on it. This book also includes a nice set of quotes from uh, various songwriters and then some like recommended listening, both in terms of songs that demonstrate particular songwriting techniques and albums that the author thinks demonstrate a variety of songwriting techniques. I have followed the trails established by those songs and albums and enjoyed almost all of them. So lots of good to be found in this book. Highly, highly, highly recommended. The next book I want to recommend is represented in this instance by a piece of paper. It's Writing Better Lyrics by Pat Pattison. I have this on my Kindle, and it is an invaluable resource for thinking about and working on your lyric writing, which for me at least is a really important part of the process of writing a song. I'm not the best singer, so like my melodies, as, as interesting as they might be, they're not conveyed with the same weight that like my voice can convey words. So, you know, it's important for me to care a lot about lyrics and that's why I care a lot about this book. Pat Patterson has a ton of detail, a ton of recommendations in this book, but begins with some really simple building blocks. And I think that every writer could benefit from focusing on just those building blocks. In fact, whatever the price of this book is now on Amazon, it's probably like 12 bucks. Um, that money is worth it just for you to get the explanation for and a push into doing the object writing exercise that is discussed in detail at the beginning of the book. It's one of the best writing exercises, like 
sort of creativity inspiring exercises that I've ever done. The only thing that competes to it is morning pages from the artist's way, which is a similar sort of exercise and just can't recommend it enough. And that's just like the first chapter or something. And then Pattison like builds off of that into a bunch of other ideas. Excellent book, tons to digest. Highly recommend for anybody who writes songs with words. And for everybody, not just writers of songs with words, I would recommend the Berkeley Book of Jazz Harmony. Uh, it's not for the faint of heart, though. I went through a period of trying to learn jazz harmony, um, which mostly broke my brain. Um, I've got several books that I tried to use to learn it, but this is the one that I want to highlight because it really has a focus on something that it calls functional harmony. That's a term that I had never heard used until I was reading this book, and it absolutely transformed the way that I thought about harmony about what chords do in songs and what chords could do if I thought about using them in a functional way. To put it really simply, the book encourages you to think of almost any kind of chord, not by its name, uh, but by the function that it performs. It doesn't have a tonic or a subdominant or a dominant function. If you're familiar with the basics of music theory, you've heard those terms before, but this book encourages you to sort of broaden those terms and the way you think about them so that like in the context of a major key the one or the six or the three could all be considered tonic chords the two and the four subdominant and the five and the seven being dominant chords and that's just like the tip of the iceberg but i can't emphasize enough just beginning to think about the chords that i was using in those terms um really helped me be a little bit more confident and adventurous in the choices that I was making. I really think it's helped improve the decisions I've made in my chord choice and in how to like build songs so that they have a more clear shape and a more satisfying like cadences. Um, I, I just really think everybody would learn something from that book. And again, this is stuff that I picked up in like the first three chapters. God knows what it says at the end. Now, the next two books I want to recommend are books focused on specific artists. Each has a different uh, purpose, I suppose. The first is woo, the Complete Beatles Recording Sessions. This is a classic that for a long time was out of print and it could only be bought at an extremely high price. It's back in print now. I, I have two of them. This is hardcover and the other one's paperback, but they were both cheap. You can find it cheap, I promise. This is an, uh, a, a book with like exhaustive detail about the recording sessions for the Beatles albums from their very first record all the way through to their very last. Um, it's designed as an overview of the recording process, not so much the writing process. And so you might think, well, why is this on a songwriting list? And the reasons are two. First, because the distinction between writing and recording or producing, I think, becomes thinner with every passing year. So um, there's value to learning about how you might construct a final recorded song. That's something that you might need to be thinking about as you think about the song that you're writing. And the second reason, though, is because it's a nice glimpse into the staggering number of hasty and or arbitrary decisions that went into the making of the Beatles albums, which are about as like totemic as albums can be. They're held as sacred now, but as you go through the details of this, there are so many situations where they were rushed, where they were just like half thinking about how to solve problems or had harebrained ideas that they just like assign to some lackey to try and solve. And that's what you ended up with. What I learned from this is that I didn't have to take my writing or recording process quite as seriously as I initially may have thought, that there was a lot to be gained from accidents and following my instincts in real time and that flaws might seem like flaws in the moment, but with hindsight and in the context of a larger product might seem destined. That's just kind of a crazy concept that I really had driven home by digging into this book. And the fifth and final book that I want to recommend is this one. To borrow a phrase from Robert Anton Wilson, this book takes sort of a guerrilla approach. Its goal is sort of to attack your preconceived notions about what it takes to have a number one single, to write it, to produce it, to release it. And for someone like me who's oriented toward rules and sometimes gets stuck in like the quagmire of too many rules, this was a really fun and liberating read. So, um, the manual, go check it out. That's my list. I really appreciate your time. If you liked this, like it, subscribe to the channel, and in the comments, if you have favorite books about songwriting that I didn't mention, and I'm sure there are a ton of great books that I didn't mention, please mention them for everybody to read. As always, I really appreciate your time, and I'll see you around.